each one of us can actually make that difference. When it comes to society change, we don't realize that we just follow a system. If it is right or wrong, we don't bother. You know, this is tradition. This is the way. If everybody, if everybody thought like that, mm -hmm. India wouldn't be independent today. You know, exactly. thanks to Gandhi for him breaking the norm of what yeah. was going on. That's how change happens. Somebody has to initiate it. Uh -huh. You know, and when we turn around and say, okay, because this is tradition, this is the way it is. Tradition's good. I believe in tradition. I believe it's good. But there are times where change is necessary. Yes. And it's for us as intelligent human beings, especially being given the power of education, the weapon of education and worldly knowledge, um, it is for us to then make that judgment, what is right and what is wrong, as opposed to just following like sheep for anything or stopping something happening just because it has been said, this is the way it's been done, you know? The wealthiest parts of metro cities is where female feticide is happening. Oh my God. It is happening in your Malabar Hills. It is happening in the most educated parts of Bombay. Oh Where do you start, you know? I'm the first one who goes traveling around going, education, education, education is what it's all about. Yes, it is, but how stumped are we when our most educated, literate and well-off people are the ones checking whether it's a female child or a male child and doing away with the baby. You'd be surprised. Husbands are happy with the female child. The mother-in-laws, the in-laws are happy. And it's the woman who goes, no, I want a boy. Blood pressure goes up. It is the women who are making this decision and the educated women. Where do you start? How do you change that? Where do you start? Where is your heart? Where is your soul? With anything. Mm -hmm. Like I keep saying, change is constant. We have signs. We can clone. We have, you know, today, look at what we can do with stem cells. Exactly. Yeah? You, you're going to heal people. You're going to, you know, heal people from illnesses we never thought were possible to heal them from. You have a new life. And it's good. It's good. But... There's always a flip side to the coin. It can be abused. The good thing with being able to, you know, with, with the, the scans, with the ultrasounds, with everything that we have today with technology, mm -hmm. the good side of it is you can tell if something's wrong with the baby yes. and you can treat the baby there, there and then. Itself. You can treat the mother, you can treat the child. So the child, you know, you're prepared. Things come out better. Mm -hmm. Forewarned is forearmed. Yeah. But... Misuse. There's a devil on every side, you know? It's just being misused. You, yeah. The same thing can be used for good and evil. It's our choice. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself, hold on to your femininity, and be confident. It's only now that women speak up, because there is this huge stigma attached to rape, where women always felt that it was their fault if they had been raped. If you look at the psychology of women who've been raped, they always tend to feel somewhere that they're to blame. They have never been told. In the West, people were more open about it because the children are taught if somebody touches you the wrong way, if somebody, you know, does anything funny, come and tell mommy, come and tell daddy, go and tell your teacher. But over here, it's, you know, it's like, don't. And even when parents know about it, it gets swept under the carpet. Nobody wants to talk about it. So it's kind of like an ostrich. You bury your head in the sand and let the world carry on and therefore you're oblivious. Um, today women are coming out and speaking about it more and they're being more open because they are more confident. And somewhere from inside, I think one leads to another to another. It's a domino effect that someone goes, okay, she's spoken up, I will speak up too. It takes a lot of courage for a woman to open up and say that she's been raped and put herself out there in that position. Um, but if you look at it, why don't more women come up? Trust me, they will come up. If only our verdict was severe. And your rape cases will drop drastically if your verdict is strong. Because a man still knows he can get away with it today. Whereas if your verdict is so strong where it's bob it. If you are found guilty of rape, I'd say bob it cut it off, castrate him. That way, another man who's thinking of doing it, trust me, will think 10,000 times before he commits rape. That is how you can protect women. 
make your verdict very, very severe and protect women that way. That's great, Dan. And no matter what, you have, it's disgusting. You have very educated women going, oh, she asked for it, oh, she deserved it. Don't, yeah, just don't get me started on it. No means no. No means no. And if they don't say, if they don't accept a no, it is rape. You know, unfortunately, it's, it's getting more and more, in, in, um, more prevalent in metros. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they have found that breast cancer is increasing by the number in metros is, one is we get married later, okay. you know, so that increases your risk. Two is the lifestyles we lead. Stress is another factor. Alcohol, smoking, bad diets, bad exercise. And people look and they go, wait a minute, in rural areas they don't exercise. No, they don't go to the gym and exercise, but look at their lifestyles, you know. They have children earlier. They breastfeed longer, their child. These are all, these are all your risk factors. Plus, if, if a mother has breast cancer, then one out of her four children is bound to have it. Okay. Yeah. So that's your ratio. Mm -hmm. What people don't realize, it's not just women who have breast cancer. Men do as well. Oh, really? 1% okay. of breast cancer cases are men. But you, do, you hardly hear about it. But yeah. that's because it's just 1%. Okay. But it's still, you know, it's still possible. When it comes to breast cancer, yes, you can't prevent it. Mm -hmm. But if it's detected in time, it's over, I think it's over 85% to 90% okay. that can be cured completely. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to just do your checkups. When you're in the shower, do your checkup. Just feel around your breast tissue, feel under your armpit. Ask your, your general practitioner how you check yourself up. And once a year, just once a year, go for a mammogram. You'd be amazed. My grandmother died of breast cancer. And she's got seven daughters. None of them go for checkups. None of them. It's the fear. That if something it is the fear up. that controls people, which is why they don't go and get themselves checked. But in India, with them it's the fear. But in India, we're all so blase. It will never happen to us. It happens to other people. It will never happen to us. And then it does. The best people in you and people like you and I can do is create an awareness and draw attention to it. Mm -hmm. You know, like they say, you can take a horse to the water. Yeah. You can't force it to drink. drink. So, knowledge is power. We can give them the information, and then how they use it is up to them. Right. But I feel blessed that I'm in a position where I can share that information with people. Mm -hmm. And this is what I say. You know, when I travel around and I speak so much about breast cancer awareness, I think if one person goes and does a checkup, it's worth it. It's worth the effort because you never know how you can help someone. The young girls, I'd say it's really important to believe in yourselves. I would say set your goal with your heart and follow it with your mind. But never ever lose sight of that aim. Because as soon as you lose sight of that aim that you have, it weakens your position. It weakens your focus. Um, but while you do all that, never forget where you belong. Never forget your grounding. Never forget, you know, the people in your life, the family, the friends. It's, it's important. And remember to work is to pray.